Hi, little birdie. Hi. Let me at least get out of the door first. Hang on. You can come and sit here if you want. Oof, look, I've got some yummy mints for you. All right, hang on, hang on. I know it's exciting, isn't it? Let me put the bowl down first. Hang on, hang on. There you go. You can help yourself if you want to. There you go. You're hungry, hey? Whoops. Let me get the lid off. Can't do it one-handed. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. How are you, little one? Now, where's the kookaburras, I wonder? I wonder where the kookaburras are. Oh, okay, hang on. This is where the kookaburras. I wonder where the kookaburras are. Are you around kookaburras? G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out with Julie. And look, I've got flip cups. Yay, for those of you that have been missing my flip cups because I've been doing pearl pours and resin coasters, today is flip cup day. And I'm using these colors. Um, the group challenge on the Facebook group, Pouring Your Heart Out with Julie, is doing winter colours. Um, because it's winter in Australia, not necessarily all over the world, depending on where you are, but winter here. So those are the colours. Navy, steel blue, a sort of a grey blue, a beige, and then um, a bit of a sort of a peachy, pale peachy colour. So that's the inspiration. Pretty, huh? So that's what I'm going to do today. Let's see if I can remember how to do flip cup pours. It's been so long. Just putting my gloves on. Now this is a 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter canvas, 12 by 24 inch. And I'm going to do five cups. Pouring medium is 60% glue. This is Elmer's glue all. You can use school glue. As long as it's a white PVA craft glue, you're fine, and 40% water. And then I mix that equal parts, one-to-one, -one with my Montmartre Studio Paint. That's it there. I'm not going to show you every colour because I've had to mix my own colours. And seriously, it's taken me ages because I'd run out of navy. I had to make more of my steel blue. My beige I'd run out of. And then I had to make this peachy colour. So I used a peach and a pink and some white. And then the grey, I had some grey, but I just added a little bit of the um, steel blue to it to make that. So those are my colours. Uh, let's get started. Let's put some treadmill silicone in. And I think I'll do four drops in each. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sort of spread them around. I'm not even squeezing this. They're just sort of falling out on their own. So just be careful not to squeeze your... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that was a bit much. Whole hip just poured in there. Let's just touch the top to get some of it out. There we go. All right, now stir it in really, really well. It leaves a mound on a mound. I'll come up and show you the consistency. And when you do a little ribbon on top, it's kind of gone in two to three seconds. So don't hold it way up here because you're going to get a different look. So bottom of the stick near the top of the cup. So you get a mound on a mound and then when you do a ribbon, one, two, three. Oh, it might be a bit thick that one. One, two, three. I like it to be gone in three seconds. So I think I'll add a little bit of water to that one. It looks a little on the thick side. Just a little splash. I'll come up again and see how that goes. If your mix is too thick, you get tiny little cells and they won't stretch. If it's too thick and then they kind of break apart. If it's too thick. One, two, three. That's better. One, two, three. 
Right, that'll do me. Righty oh, let's stir all these in. Feel free to fast forward. Now I've kind I've only got two dark colours really, my steel blue and my navy blue. So I've separated those because there's no point putting the two navies together, is there? You won't even see your cells, your rings around yourself. So I've separated them. Um, as I usually do, I go light dark, light dark when I'm doing my layering in my cup. And make sure you stir these in really well, guys. Otherwise, you're going to get big blobs of silicone when you flip your cups over. And then you stretch those blobs and they turn into these big wormy creatures. So, yeah. Um, I haven't put any oil in the, the white. Righto, let's get going, shall we? This is going to take a while. I'm going to do two layers in each cup. So make sure that you don't use all your paint in the first layer. Keep half of it for your second layer. And then I just like to drizzle just to cover the top. And if your cups are close enough together, you can just keep going over like that. You don't even have to stop. <laughs> all right, so that's about half. So for this size canvas, I tend to use about 900 grams of mixed paint, uh, which is about 30 ounces. If you need to know how many ounces are in grams, you just divide like the 900 by 30. So three threes are nine. It's an easy one for me to work out, isn't it? <laughs> 900 grams, 30 ounces. Looking forward to this. It's been so long since I've done a flip cup and a big one, mind you, too. I have enjoyed doing my pearl pours, but um, this is generally my favourite thing to do, flip cups. They're a little bit challenging, though, I must say. You know, they, they don't always work and sometimes you overstretch your cells. You just have to make sure that you've got enough paint so that you can stretch everything. So that's how you make your cells bigger is by stretching them when you tilt your canvas. And keep going, keep going. I hope everyone's been safe in these difficult times all over the world. I'm back at work. Seem, things seem to be getting pretty much back to normal in, in Australia, or well, where I am anyway. So that's a good thing, hey? I think we're just going to have to be careful, basically, from now on, you know, with any kind of new virus and disease that's going on. You just have to be careful if you think that you're, you're coming down with something. If you're ill, you're going to have to just stay away from everybody else. Protect yourself, protect everyone else. And I think it's just going to be a new way of life for us. Isn't it? <laughs> Oops, I hope I've got enough navy. I always run out by the end of the time I come down here. I've got no, no colours left. I might just start at this end with the next one. I'll have to scrape it out and get some more navy out of there. Oh, I haven't got my corner catcher either. I must go and get that. Remind me. Go and get my corner catcher. Try and get as much of that navy out as I can. That's going to be my pop colour. Now, you've got a lot in you, so let's go over here. Start up here. And then you can just have the dregs because there's not much left. The dregs. Is that an Aussie word? I don't know. The leftovers. <laughs> I don't know. I say these things and I think, oh, I wonder if people understand what I'm even talking about. We have all these Australian sayings and words. The dregs. The leftover bits. <laughs> now this one didn't have very much blue, so let's start with blue over here and make sure it's got enough. Oops, look, I'm running out again. And you can have the dregs. Don't know if it's got anything to do with dreadlocks. Don't know. Thank you. 
I pull that out. Right, nearly done, you guys. Nearly done. Here's my peachy colour. I think the peach in that photo was maybe just a bit of sunset or sunrise, you know, a little bit of the sun poking through. Maybe shining on the the ice and the snow gives that kind of like a little peachy colour maybe. It's pretty anyway. We tend to have a challenge. There's there's no winner or loser in, in my group's challenge. It's just a colour scheme that you may not have thought about using and you want to have a go and you just do it and you put your painting up and everyone looks at it and says how wonderful it is. And then, I don't know, I, I don't sort of do one very regularly. I probably should, but maybe every two weeks or two to four weeks I do one. I haven't actually done one for a while because I've been so busy with my resin stuff. I haven't even thought about it. Are you guys enjoying the resin though? Those of you that like my acrylic pouring, do you like watching the resin as well? Or are you just acrylic pourers? pouring watches and don't want to watch the resin. I never know which of my subscribers watch which videos. But um, I think a few of you, or well, quite a few of you actually, pourers are now starting to do a bit of resin, which is lovely. Coming along on my resin journey, so to speak. Oh, look at those colors. Right, on, let's flip you babies over. Hopefully they'll look nice. Sorry if I'm shaking the table. My tripod is just there on my table. So every time I bang the table, <laughs> the tripod gets shooken up. Okay, now while that's sitting, I'm going to get my corner catcher. Uh, just a bit of cardboard that I've cut in half, or slot cut and then bent. So it goes there. Catches. Right. <clears throat> Smooth out my blobs. I haven't sprayed these cups with silicone oil because I, I think I made a little bit more paint than I probably needed. Um, so I thought, oh, I'm not even going to bother spraying them. And if a little bit stays in there, then so be it. I'll get my torch ready. I've got my big boy blow torch. Just a butane can on there. It's really easy to use. You just turn that. Ugh, turn that. Like that. <laughs> you can see I haven't used it for a while and then you do that. And there we go. And then off again. So easy. But yeah, probably haven't used it for a while. It's stiffened up. All right, let's get to this, you guys. Hopefully it's hopefully it's pretty. All right, so remember those are the colours. <laughs> let's see what I can do with this, hey? Let's go. Flip and drag. And then put a little bit of what's left over just on the corner like that. Try and make it go the same direction. You know, you don't want to put like a little circle there. Just if it's been dragged that way, drag down there. Alrighty. Got my stripies. You can't really use what's left in your cup again because it's a little bit muddy. A big gap there that might be a problem I'll try and go faster with this one and then slow it down there so it kind of fills there <laughs> not really I tried it didn't really succeed all right maybe this one not really that's okay it does what it wants to do doesn't it um, what have I got left anything at all do you remember my mix is a little bit thick today? It's not flowing as well as it could. I'm just going to put that on the edge there. And a little bit here. I don't mind using these little bits for the edges and the corners because they're going to be tipped off anyway. It just helps the paint flow over the wet edge a little bit easier. I think that's about it. I don't think I've got much more. Look at those little pops of that um, peachy colour. No, that's empty. <laughs> All gone. Gonskis. Right, 
little touches of peach are pretty, aren't they? Right, so I'll turn it around and tip this way first because these are the biggest areas that I've got to cover because most of the paint came out there. Oh, hang on, I haven't done my little... See, I'm so out of practice. I haven't put my lines on, on my pedal pad so I know where to put it back when I'm done tilting. <laughs> there we go. Otherwise, you might, be, you might put it back and it's not even in the screenshot for you. Right, let's turn it around and then I can put it back in my little squares like that. See? See what I do for you? Oh, I know. All right, let's go. So tip down, but we need to go left and right, left and right to fill in these gaps. Otherwise, if we just go straight down, we're not going to cover those gaps. Try not to lose too much paint off the surface just yet. I will go over that corner though. And now I'll put the corner catcher on because I don't want to lose too much paint down here. So we'll take it all down there. See, it's kind of flowing off the, the edge as well, which is okay. We'll bring it back. So that side's covered. I'm not going to worry about that. I don't mind that at all. Looks like there's a blob of unmixed paint in there as usual. Some of these paints I haven't used for a while. So they might have a bit of a bit blobby. Oh dear, oh dear. And it's right in the middle of the painting, isn't it? Would have to be right in the middle of the painting. I think that's it. Yeah, just disguise that a little bit. Yes, I guess I was in a bit of a hurry mixing my paints. Okay, so we're over on that side. Now turn it around. Make sure you hold underneath the canvas, not on the sides. You don't want your fingerprints on the sides. Just have to touch up that side there. It hasn't gone quite over yet. There's plenty of paint left over on your puppy pedal pad to pick up and you know do your sides if you need to. Now I'm just going to get the weight of the paint back a little bit. Now I'm going to torch so that when I tip the paint the rest of the way um, the cells have got time to stretch and grow. Here we go. Hopefully my mix isn't too thick and I actually get cells up. Yeah, a bit out of practice I must say. <laughs> like very small cells <laughs> oh dear I got too close when your mix is really thick um, and you get too close you get really you get clusters and, and caterpillars so I think my mix is a little bit too thick but that's okay we'll just have small cells small ish cells don't rush this process just take your time go around come back go around again rather than getting too close and having them all jump up at the same time, all your cells, just take your time. Petane torch is making a funny noise. I wonder if it's leaking somewhere. again so I'm taking my time cells are coming but they're taking their time on their own terms they're coming up and they won't be rushed I 
I do think my mix is a little on the thick side. See how small they are? I would have liked them to be a little bit bigger at this stage. Mm, that orangey, peachy colour is giving me grief. I'm getting caterpillars up in it. Alright, I think I will just leave it there. Once I've stretched them out a little bit, I can um, torch again. Okay, so now, same thing, down but left and right to stretch these babies out. And I'll have to try and get rid of some of that because it's a bit, a bit clustery there. But left and right, try to stretch your cells out. I don't like this round bit here. You can go. Don't like you at all. Just try and straighten up everything a little bit. Oops, can't see my lines anymore. Okay. Well, that wasn't too bad, actually. The cells over on this side are still quite small. Over here they're quite big. So I'm going to see if I can maybe get some of that to move. And I will just torch again. Uh, maybe over here in this blank area I can get a few more coming up. And again, don't go too close. Just let them come up on their own terms. The paint's pretty thick, so they're going to take a while to come up to the surface. They've got to travel through lots of layers of paint. The silicone oil brings them to the surface because oil wants to rise. Oil and water don't mix and the oil wants to come up to the surface. So brings your different colours of paint with it. Another blob there. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed that my mix was on the little bit on the thick side, but these cells are pretty good. Now I'm going to see if I can bring it down and take it over just a touch, just to stretch these out. If I can't, I won't worry about it too much because I don't want to ruin what I've got. Just trying to stretch them out a little bit more. Okay, check my composition. Make sure I haven't overstretched too much. So I got rid of that little light band that was on the side there. And that sort of made those cells a little bit smaller. These ones have opened up a little bit more, not too much though. They're kind of stuck on the side of the canvas there on the, um, yes, yeah, so I can't really move them a lot. But there we go, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. What do you think? Oh, that's really pretty, I like that. I do. I'm just gonna go around real quick and pop some bubbles. bring up cells but just popping some bubbles okay what do you think love this end bit and I love that end bit this is still really pretty we've got a bit of movement in it um, now I just have to make sure my corners are all covered and run my little palette knife underneath because that will stop the paint from being pulled down because the weight of it on the sides and underneath it's quite heavy so just go around and with your little palette knife or uh, mixing stick or whatever you've got and clean up the bottom that'll stop the paint from being pulled down any further okay Rightio, that is done. Does it look wintry? 
<laughs> I'm just going to get my gloves off so I can take you down for a close-up. Um, I guess because it's got three shades of blue tones. I can't get them off there. Flip them upside down. Three lots of the blue tones. One, two, three. And then only the two of these lighter ones. These lighter ones aren't that pronounced, especially this one. There's a little bit of it through here. You can see little bits of it. Bit of peach there. That's because I think it was a bit thick, so it's kind of said, here I am, sort of sitting on top. But it's they've all just blended beautifully. What do you think? Did I get pretty close? <laughs> Maybe I need to cut down a bit on the blue. But hey, it is winter. Right. Let me take you down for a close up. Now, hopefully that um, focused. I'm on my other, my other, um, I don't know, setting. Whoops, go back. So, because the other one I was using, it made it like a really long um, video. Like it was very long and thin. I don't know whether it was any good or not. But it was autofocus. Let me just come around here and I can get rid of that on the other side of that ring light. Whoops, get your fingers out of the way, woman. I don't know how good it's going to be at autofocusing. Might have to just touch the screen to focus it every now and then, but that's okay. All right, so this is the corner that I was telling you about that I really like. Look at those cells, really pretty. Let's do a little pan over the whole thing and then that will be me done. Oh, I've got my fingers in the way again. I've got four cameras, this new phone. I never know where to hold it. I keep getting my fingers in the way. Look at those ones with the white rings around them. I love navy and white together. So pretty. Actually, those um, Cell City that I had wasn't too bad. I ended up tipping most of it off. So there's a few sort of, there's a little cluster there with some caterpillars, but it's not too bad. Just saw a little autofocus little thing flash up in the top corner, so I'll press that. Maybe that'll work. Still learning, you guys, with my new camera. Still learning. Oh, look at those. Oh, some really pretty cells. These ones have got the, are they peach? I think they're the peachy colour around the blues. Really nice, aren't they? So there you go. There she is. Just turned that ring light off so that um, <laughs> it wasn't bothering us. Is that okay for colour though, without the big ring light, fluorescent light? All right, here we go. Finishing off. Show you a last little shoot of it let me know what you think if i did okay with the colors the winter colors i'll just put it there that's them there I'll try not to get well trying to get paint on my paper not bad a little bit on the darker side okay but not too bad hey all right I'll just go up another little pan without that big ring light and just see if that's better. Let me know, you guys, in the comments. Because the first pan was with the ring light on. And then this one's with the ring light off. Or maybe you just don't care and you just like get on with it, woman, and shut up. <laughs> oh. You can fast forward if you don't want to hear me babbling on. All right. Thanks again, guys. I'll leave it there. 
Uh, let me know what you want me to do next and I will try to accommodate. All right, I'll see you real soon. Thanks again. Take care. Stay safe. Bye for now.